Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're gonna talk about IEC connectors. So let's dive right into it. Now, what exactly is the problem that we need something like IEC connectors? Well, IEC is just an association, but the problem is that world is divided and is divided in two core vectors, that is voltage and frequency. Now, you may think there are only two voltage standards, that is like, you know, 110 volt and 220 volt. Uh, well, technically, yes, practically no, simply because each country could have like something as low as 110 volts, as high as 127 volt, and can in 200 volts, it could be have 220 volts to 240 volts, as in like India has 230 volts, Australia has 240 volts. So you can understand that like it is enough, enough difference. However, thankfully all equipments and uh, because of the sloppy nature of uh, generator control in the early days, uh, every company was required to make products that can withstand 10% plus and minus intolerance. So anything that is designed to work on like let's say 110 volts will work safely in 127. However, the moment you jump that ship to 200, yeah, it will go boom. So 220 to 240 is not that big of a deal. Meaning if I carry equipment from India and go to Australia, uh, as my friend have done, most of the equipments will work without any issue. And uh, then there is an the issue of these are just the voltage side of things. Then we have Hertz. Now Hertz, uh, many international companies simply gave up on making uh, different motors. Uh, they simply, if you buy any new motor, you will find out that it has two RPMs denoted on it, especially three phase motor. You're like, why the heck it's, is that? Yeah, so simply company gave up. It's like, yeah, just make a motor so it can survive 60 hertz and 50 hertz. So it's like literally it will have RPM as in like 1500s to 1800s. It's like, oh, if you put it like 50 hertz, it's just a that kind of RPM, 16 hertz, different RPM. And each country has a different mixture. Like Japan is hyper stupid. It has like literally two frequencies. I'm not joking, like literally has two frequencies. What the hell? So you can get the point like the world is messy beyond belief and let's not even go into plugs how many plugs do we have now people kind of realized this very early on so it iec was created meaning international electro uh, technical commission now this was created long ago how long ago 26 june 1906 meaning this boy is old and they their whole foundation was that if on the early days they create a uh, standardization system and then they let it spread out to the world, every world would be united, GG. But something bad happened, uh, which we called World War II. And then it stopped the unification process simply because money, booms, stuff, not good, not good stuff happened. So they did not get that like good start, like clean slate start they wanted where like, you know, every country would have just simply uh, around 220 volts or 240 volts, uh, three phase, uh, 50 hertz. That's the most generally perfect uh, way of distributing power. So they could not get to, you know, achieve their world, uh, you know, unification, but they are still working. They are still a very big organization. They are working their ass off. And uh, to g give you the context of it, every country has to agree to it. Meaning, yeah, we understand that uh, this is the plug standard. We're going to use the same codes. We're going to follow the same rules, some regulations. And this is our national code. This is how we utilize it, how we integrate our national code to international code. Uh, so there is like a lot of communication back and forth. So you have to understand country has to sign off on it. Thankfully, 60 countries are full members. Full members meaning GG, meaning everything is properly done. All the paperwork is properly signed because uh, be under mindful. Uh, electricity nowadays is kind of safe. Now, why did it become so safe? Unfortunately, we had to pay the price of blood. And it happens in this every industry, meaning uh, why the heck modern uh, jumbo jets are so safe? Simply because lot and lot and lot of people have to lose their life so we can improve. Now, IEC is the association where they're like, you know, they're pooling all the research knowledge of everybody. It's like if somebody figured, hey dude, ring circuits are not that great, use direct circuits, use that direct circuit. Hey, uh, polarized plugs are uh, much better than, uh, you know, non-polarized plugs, use that. So, lot of knowledge from across the planet. And 60 country may not sound that much simply because given the fact that Earth has around 200 countries, but it has India, China, USA. What does that mean? Majority of the planet's population is in those three countries and Russia also is there. So if you look at practically point of view, majority of the Earth's population is covered, like majority of the population. And recently, you uh, basically, United Nations were like, you know, hey, uh, all the knowledge that you have acquired, because again, it's nobody's single knowledge. It's like acquired collective knowledge. How about you give it to the nations that are developing so they can start, lay a good foundation from day one. So now there are a lot of partial members also. So if you count partial members, almost everybody is included. So it is a big association with like seriously big power in terms of uh, utilizing some things. So their aim was to universalize everything. And uh, thankfully they succeeded. Though there is new universal standards developed by them and it has become ubiquitous. Meaning you go to USA, you will find it. You go to Australia, you will find it. You come to India, you will find it. Be uh, simply because there was a new 
category of tools reached the market, which was PC, servers, UPS, power tools, things of this nature. So what does that mean? That simply means C13 was the perfect tool to take care of all of them, meaning this puppy. And I'm reasonably sure you must have seen it, used it, or things of that nature. C13, uh, C14 would be the recipient of it. Uh, is basically, odd numbers are the male plugs, and uh, even numbers are female plugs of the same thing, meaning C13. So C14 would receive C13. So that's how it works. And uh, this is super common. You can find it everywhere, everywhere. Meaning, at this point, uh, even Indian manufacturers, meaning uh, like let's say Microtech makes a double conversion UPS or online UPS, the, the backside is filled with this, not with Indian standard plugs, simply because if you're buying online, just Generally, you are connecting electrical equipments and electrical equipments generally like ATM machines, uh, computers, servers, they generally have this sort of plug. And this is like power delivery uh, strip, so to say, used in server industry. They do not even have normal plugs. That's the whole point of it. It is slowly becoming ubiquitous. And that's why look, look at the power supply. It's supposed to go in different countries, different frequency. And uh, because generally, even though they are switch mode, they generally do require voltage selector, but they still have the same plug. That's the whole point of it. C13 became super common. Now that's the, you know, electronic side of thing. What about the connecting the electronic? That's why right now all you get is plug. Where you will have uh, electrical plug on one end and you will have C13 on another end. Now, what about this puppy? This puppy, uh, the whole world is slowly trying to go into Shuko plug. Now, Shuko plug is uh, basically sold in India also, simply because, again, be mindful, it's not safe in India, simply because the grounding will not work. But it's uh, okay for laptop plugs and uh, basically things of this nature, like this Bo Bosch angle grinder, it also has the Shuko plug, uh, simply because it does not have metal chassis, so it does not require grounding. I don't know why, but like that's, that's what it is. So, why this plug specifically? This was inherently designed with all the learnings of every other plug. The pin gap, basically the pin uh, width between these two things is good enough where it can work with Indian plug without an issue. So even if a manufacturer in India sells it, uh, any Indian individual can use Indian plugs to just connect it. So that is one good thing. So it's uh, uh, basically this is nowadays called Euro plug. It's compatible in surprisingly large amount of planets. Uh, it will work. And this also has some locking uh, features where I will explain that also in further. It is what uh, your agencies are trying to push as a universal AC socket, especially for 200 volts. And it is truly becoming worldwide because I'm reasonably sure you can go anywhere, any IT store, you will find this thing, nothing else. That's the whole success part of it. There is a bigger brother of 13 also, uh, which is designed for 16 amp. This puppy is only for 10 amps. There is a bigger brother that has like, you know, instead of uh, or, uh, parallel pins, it has a horizontal pins, uh, is designed for 16 amps. Now locking is another aspect that people learned from day one, is that loose plugs are dangerous hazard. Meaning e even in this, my angle grinder, uh, I used a very cheap uh, extension uh, early on and because the plug was loose, it created arcing and damaged the pin and these are solid lux and somehow they managed to damage it. So that's a serious thing and you have to understand it has universal motor so starting spike is idiotic. So it caused damage to this. Now thankfully I detected it and you just removed it and it only happened every time it was starting but again if I do it again and again on it was like you know plugged and forgotten and then it could cause a fire hazard. It has happened enough in past that people know loose plugs are not okay. You should never use loose plugs. That's why like uh, any country any serious association will never allow to use universal plugs anywhere. That's why you will never find universal plugs in hospitals because it's like dude universal plugs are like not good for anything. They're like you may feel like oh I can connect this and that now. Nah. No, no. You need to have dedicated male and female in order to work reliably, in order to carry it. Like if it says uh, I'm carrying one amp, okay, almost any loose fitting will work. But the moment you say instead of carrying one amp, I'm carrying 10 amps, yeah. And especially when you are talking about surge charges, where you have like a, a universal motor, that starting amp requirement is ludicrous. Induction motor, that also has uh, like, you know, uh, big strokes. Those sort of system will just melt the plug. So it's a very serious thing. Loose plugs is not acceptable. And critical systems, for example, let's say uh, servers, ATM machines, uh, you know, life, uh, life apparatus that is used in hospitals, for example, ventilators, they cannot afford to be loose. They cannot be like, oops. So that loose series is very serious. So like everybody understands this from day one, like it has to be taken care of. So locking gives a peace of mind where everybody is like, dude, if I'm using this connector, if this is working properly, I do not have to worry too much about it. I have just uh, bought this meaning. 
it, it has not arrived yet but uh, c13 you can buy a uh, rewirable plugs where you have c15 which has a locking system meaning if you send it to any socket and it will be locked so i'm trying to build a basically extension so i'm thinking of using that because again okay, extension will have a lot of pull having a locking connector is desirable and servers there any critical server will always have locking system and uh, if you do not have that recipient that can absorb the like c14 that is locking you can buy c13 that has the locking system itself so it will work with almost anything and even on the ac side where you have to talk about a uh, shuko plug this sort of system is designed where the cap is designed in such a way that it will latch on to the plug so it will have a uh, rudimentary seal and not to mention because of the plastic uh, housing it's designed in such a way that it acts as a first line of contact meaning you have plastic to plastic is the carrying the brunt load rather than the electrical contact so electrical contacts last much longer and it has much higher uh, grip strength where it's like no it works you connected it it works it will not just like oops it will not have that oops moment so all industrial plugs are specifically designed in such a way that it can support locking a two-way locking could be there one-way locking could be there, but at least has to be have some way of locking that's why even in indian standard we are getting this sort of system even though this does not have grounding if you can plug it in some way where it's like completely locked it's not gonna twist it's not gonna fall out accidentally that's a good peace of mind you have to invest into that like if you go into any critical server industry and it's like you're just gonna have the plug they're like does the door disappear you have to have locking connectors there or the power delivery strip itself has to be locking uh, type you have to have it it's not optional you have to have it and then we come to the biggest success story of uh, IEC, high power. Now you have to understand there was a gap in national plug standards simply because we got electricity before we got plugs. Now like wait a minute, how? Well, uh, the original impact in the old days as in like 1905, everybody was expecting light to be used for primarily lighting. Now lighting was something that is permanent. Like you have a bulb, it's permanent. It's just there. You're not gonna like plug it or unplug it. It was something like you ha hardwire everything. Then we got water pumps. Again, hardwire equipment. Still now you buy water pumps, they are generally hardwire kind of equipment. AC uh, became after that. It's like, you know, these sort of heavy power appliances, they were all generally designed for uh, basically hard wiring things. So there was a gap. We got electricity, everybody was using electricity, but after some while people were like, dude, I think we will be better off if we have plugs. So plugs, uh, you started to permeate the world. Thank, uh, unfortunately, it was not standardized from day one. So we had blah, 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 blah. But even now, there was a very serious gap in national plugs. Meaning, uh, if you go to any country's national book that was like, you know, built before IEC, you're like, dude, how are you supposed to connect three phase generators? They're like, nah. Because inherently, nobody was even thinking that uh, back in the, uh, like, you know, in future, we're gonna have like three phase generators that are like so common that you're gonna have it everywhere. Like in case of India, uh, every few meters you can find it. It's like, why mobile towers? All mobile towers have that three phase generator. So, in high power three phase, there was no quote unquote plug that was standardized enough. So that gives them IEC a very good opportunity where they're like, dude, we're gonna standardize across the planet. And that's why this sort of system starts to work where you have yellow color that is rated for uh, below 130 volts, blue color, uh, single phase generally for uh, 220, uh, 250 volts. And then you have red one, uh, 380 volts to 440 volts. So what does this mean? This means simply at their maximum capacity, meaning the biggest chunk that you can buy, it can support 240 volts at 125 amps, which is around 90 kilowatts. That's a whole generator that you can plug in and plug out without any issue. That's like enough where even uh, basically charging your car on AC circuit generally uh, charges only go up to around uh, 15 to 20 kilowatts. That's so far ahead of it. It's like it does not even matter. So if you have AC fast charging, this sort of plug would be used to carry the uh, basically main three phase power to the distribution unit. So this became a very good successful story. There are many companies that are manufacturing it and these are robust connectors. These are connectors that are like, you know, backbone of basically uh, many things that are outdoors, rough and tough. Uh, basically, you go to a factory and you see a giant uh, robotic arm. How the heck it's connected? One of these would be generally behind it. And if you go, go into any system where it's like high power welder, how it would be connected? something like this would be used. Uh, so this is designed in such a way and they are like so well thought out. They are like almost rainproof, meaning if you plug it there, if it's done correctly, installation is correctly, it should handle rain surprisingly well. Some are even waterproof level. Uh, so it can handle rain, majority of them, and designed for outdoor and use and abuse, meaning they are designed to withstand a lot of ultraviolet. The plastic will not just uh, degrade instantaneously. So they can survive outdoor for decades. So everything about these sort of uh, connectors were like very thought out, very well thought out. It's like, no, uh, we have, uh, you know, salty environments. Can you survive salty? We have very freezing cold temperature. Can you survive it? Everything was thought out. Uh, we have a lot of rain. How can you survive that? All that. So this was a very good success story where if you go anywhere on the planet, you buy like, hey, can you give me, let's say, 125 amp uh, three-phase uh, system? 
generally you're gonna get best plug anywhere on the planet so this is was a very good success story this is what supposed to be everywhere uh, about everything uh, but unfortunately that did not happen because of world war ii but that happens but this was a good success story that's why right now you go to any place uh, high power plugs will generally look the same simply because they're standardized across the world so this was my presentation on uh, IEC plugs. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.